So I'm sharing, as you see, epiphanies, nine obscure words that reveal the whole purpose of life. And what I realized is that we cannot see the naked splendor of our being in the mirror of our ordinary vocabulary. But when we peer through the lens of these nine obscure words, we remember who and what we really are and what we've come here to do. So I want to begin with a wonderful quote by George Bernard Shaw. He says, this is the true joy in life, the being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one, the being thoroughly worn out before you are thrown on the scrap heap, the being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. Well, I don't know about you, but I can relate to both these personalities. And so the question is, what does it take to evolve from a feverish, selfish little clod to a force of nature? So that's what this odyssey is about. And sometimes I feel a little like a little I. Insignificant, alone, fragmented, and shy. Mind detached from body, diminished in size, the epitome, <laughs> oh, pity me, <laughs> of self-compromise. Other times I tower with the courage, strength, and power of the capital I that touches the sky and connects it to Earth. Then my sense of self-worth is completely removed from the impulse to prove who I am by what I have, think, say, know, or do. But how do we get there? So what I discovered, looking at the language, is sometimes we have to turn our whole lives upside down to become an exclamation point for what we believe in, to stand for truth and beauty and to stand for nothing less. Easy words to say. Where do I find the courage and the compulsion to go from eye to eye? For me personally, it's in the dictionary, which is the other good book about the word. And I've had many defining moments with the dictionary because there are many obscure, forgotten, and remarkable words of such beauty and verve. They deserve to be back in circulation. So I want to reintroduce to you some of the ones that I believe possess the sweetest juice in hopes of inducing you to use them in your communication. For when these words regain a common currency, I believe there may well be an amplification of divine potentialities in the awareness of the entire English-speaking population that then ripples out to raise up all humanity. So as we know, life can be really challenging, and sometimes it feels like it's stripping everything away from us till we're down to our bare essentials, and our bare essential self is called our purusha. It is a Hindu word, but it's in the English dictionary, and every one of us has this essential self. Now, because of theocracy, we're never alone. You may think that theocracy means, you, means uh, uh, church and state dictating united and governmental policy being divinely guided, said to be. But the alternate theocracy spelled with an S and not a C is not in every dictionary, which is itself a commentary. For theocracy means union of the personal soul with God above. So what need have we for admonitions, taboos, decrees, and prohibitions when all are guaranteed admission to the promised land? By definition. 
So this brings us to our parousia. So every purusha has a parousia, and that's a Greek word meaning the presence in anything of the idea after which it was formed. And if that sounds a little complicated, we can just go to this agape affirmation. I come from a divine and perfect idea held in the mind of God, even if you have absolutely no idea what it is. <laughs> But just as the uh, blueprint for the butterfly is in the caterpillar egg, the complete instructions for the acorn is within us, is within the uh, oak. Got that mixed up. But anyway, the perfect pattern within us is fully present, but it's a seed potential. So how do we activate the seed? Some seeds have to go through two cycles of frost and thaw before they germinate. And some have to go through a fire to germinate. And we are at that kind of crossroads where uh, things are heating up for the requisite impulse <laughs> to go searching for who and what we are and uh, to become essentially like popcorn. It's all heating up so that we flower. However, most of us suffer from the crippling disease of I amnesia, which is, <laughs> a temporary loss of infinitely long-term memory. So we go on this hero's journey, which is quite a, a ride. And the hero's journey, the odyssey of self-discovery, I was once trying to rhyme the odyssey, and I realized I was going, the odyssey, the odyssey, the odyssey, the odyssey. It has to be a word. And indeed it is. It means a vindication of the goodness of God in relation to the existence of evil. So it means that whatever life throws at us who we are as spirit in the flesh is far greater. And this pounding that we sometimes experience is what it takes to actualize our fullest potential. We need our pain to drive us into our brilliance. And suffering can both hollow out and hallow out the heart. And compassion is the compass that's within us all, which brings us to the next wonderful word, Eudaimonics. It sounds marvelously devilish, but what it means is the happiness that comes from doing the right thing. And we now have scientific evidence that that works with mirror neurons. We're soft wired for empathy. So the platinum rule we do unto ourselves as we do unto others, it cannot be otherwise. And that brings us to entelechy, which is the actualization of our essential potential and the self-actualizing impulse within us, which must be at least as strong in humans as it is in caterpillars. <laughs> and only through this process do we experience the great fullness that is the eternal key to perpetual bliss. And perusia, when it's capitalized, means the second coming. In lowercase, it's the presence of the idea after which we were formed. When we actualize it, that is what the second coming is. It's about all of us coming to and our, having our collective awakening, our conscious connection with source, our journey of victory over adversity, ultimately leading to the actualization of our essential potential. So what if this also requires that we act eudaimonically in ways that benefit everyone? Wouldn't we transform the world overnight? So we need to know that we are omnificent. We possess full creative power. And on 12-22-12, we will enter what the Mayans call the Age of Flowers. You might be interested to know that LOL in the Mayan language means flowers, consciousness, and vibration. <laughs> All of us have the capacity to be flowers. We are the 1% in consciousness, and as we see it, so be it. So according to the vision of possibilities we hold, we can redirect the life stream before we go over the edge into a life stream in which the human race is finally one. Which leads us to the word Nicodonia, the happiness that comes from the anticipation of future success. So find your vision, hold it, be happy, because 
An epiphany is a revelation. It's also the manifestation of a deity. That's who we are. And now is the, the infinite is infinite by definition. And this is a time to be you too full. Thank you. Thank you.